This isn't a new kit, but Battlefront's Sherman V is part of the late war products being released for 4th edition Flames of War. Let's have a look at this plastic kit from 2014, and some of the current British box sets it's a part of. The Sherman 5 is the designation for the M4A4 Sherman in British service. It's a 75mm armed Sherman powered by a 30-cylinder petrol engine. The A57 multibank engine was created by arranging five six-cylinder Chrysler car engines around a central drive shaft. While complex, the design proved reliable, although its size necessitated stretching the rear hull, giving a wider spacing between the bogies. The M4A4 was mainly exported and used by US allies rather than American forces. I'm cheating on this one. I'm using this open fire box set I bought a while ago. The plastic in here is the same 2014 plastic as that being used for the new D-Day British box sets. It has parts to build both the 75mm arm Sherman 5 gun tank as well as the 17 pounder Firefly. The D-Day British Desert Rat Squadron starter box set has two of these kits to provide Sherman Firefly support for the Cromwell Stuarts and Churchills. It's also used in the Sherman Armoured Troop and the Cromwell Armoured Troop boxes. The Sherman Armoured Troop has five Sherman tanks, a decal sheet and eight unit cards. This box can be used to build a Sherman Armoured Troop, a Sherman DD Armoured Troop, a Firefly Armoured Troop or a Sherman OP Observation Post for artillery spotting. The Cromwell Armoured Troop box contains four Cromwells, one Firefly, a decal sheet and seven unit cards. This can build you a Cromwell Armoured Troop, a mixed unit of Cromwells with a Firefly for heavy AT support. The cards for this are for the Desert Rats, so you will have a reluctant 5 plus motivation rating. However, they do get the cautious not stupid rule, which gives them a 3 plus remount. The Cromwell only armoured recce troop and the Centaur support tank platoon you can also field from these box are both confident. Now that we've seen what box sets it's available in, let's look at the plastic. Each Sherman 5 comes on two sprues. Mine from the old open fireboxing are medium grey. This first sprue has the upper and lower hull, turret, transmission cover and guns. The upper hull has moulded on tools. Detail here looks crisp and is moulded in strong relief. This should paint up well. Note the lack of engine deck grills characteristic of the Sherman 5, which had the Chrysler multibank engine. Next to the hull you can see the closed commander's hatch, the gun trunnion piece and the turret peg. The long gun is the 17 pounder cannon for the Firefly, while the shorter one is the standard 75mm. The tiny piece there is the bow machine gun. This is fiddly to cut free and glue on, but it can be done. Next we can see the two turrets. The one with the loader's hatch is for the Firefly. The other is for the standard Sherman 5. Note the extension to the Firefly's bustle. This contained the radios, which had to be moved outside the standard turret to make room for the recoiling breech of the larger main gun. The other part here is the three-piece bolted transmission cover. That's the most common option on both the Sherman 5 and Firefly, but you could also use the one-piece cast cover for variety if you had one spare from a different Battlefront Sherman kit. The one-piece and three-piece transmissions were interchangeable and could be swapped and substituted during maintenance. Just a fun and easy way to create some variety between vehicles if you want to. The last parts here are the open commander's hatch, the lower turret piece and the lower hull. Unfortunately, there aren't enough parts in this kit to make up both turrets. You'll have to choose which version to build. The second sprue has the tracks, glasses options and gun mantlets, as well as some stowage and spare tracks. Tracks are one-piece parts. These are keyed so you can only put them on the right way. Track detail is OK, with the common T48 Chevron rubber block pattern represented. Suspension detail is fine, with VVSS vertical volute suspension, trailing return rollers, and what looks like six-spoke stamped road wheels. There are two glasses options. One has a blanked-off bow machine gun port. 
This is for the Firefly, which dispensed with the bow gunner in order to store more ammunition for the main gun. This is an interesting engineering choice by Battlefront. Having the two glasses plates leaves you with a join line between this and the rest of the hull. There was a weld seam here, but unless you fill it, it's more prominent than the other weld joins on the kit. Not a big issue, but I would have gone for moulding the glasses on the hull, but it's not a deal breaker. The Sherman 5 glasses plate does have extra welded armour in front of the two crew hatches that's not included on the Firefly plate. Both pieces have a tiny bit of flashing that will need a quick swipe of an emery board to sort out. There are two gun mantlets here. The one on the left is for the standard gun tank, while the one on the right is for the Firefly. There is keying on the guns, with a D-shaped key on the Firefly 17-pounder. This should help you match the right gun to the right mantlet. Both my mantlets have unfortunate sink marks just above the gun. This is usually a pressure or temperature issue during the injection moulding rather than a fault of the mould. Yours might be fine. The rest of the parts are stowage, including a storage box for the back of the Firefly turret, a rear hull stowage box, the 17-pounder gun travel lock, as well as some spare tracks and a road wheel. There are two unfortunately prominent ejector pin marks on the rear hull stowage bin that will benefit from filling and clean-up. So that's the plastic for Battlefront's Sherman 5 and Firefly kit. Overall the quality is good and it builds up into a nice kit. The gap behind the glasses plate and hull is a bit disappointing, but this is one of their older kits. It can be filled or ignored if it doesn't bother you. There are no side skirts supplied with this kit. The British did use them, but they were much less common in Northwest Europe than in North Africa. The Sherman 5 is longer than other versions due to the multibank engine, so the side skirts from other Sherman kits shouldn't fit, but I haven't checked. It's not a big issue not to have them, the kit's fine without them. You can see I've built mine as a Sherman Firefly. This is an inbox review, so I'm only going to briefly touch on the 4th edition unit cards here. The Sherman and Firefly stat cards are pretty much the same except for the gun. Firefly has a longer range, reaching out to 36 inches or 90 centimetres, as opposed to the 75 millimetres 28 inches or 70 centimetres. Good for long range work. AT is 14 for the 17 pounder as opposed to 10 for the standard gun. Both have a 3 plus firepower. Firefly lacks the smoke option of the standard tank and can't fire HE. This means it adds a plus one to hit when firing at infantry or gun teams. The Sherman cards from the Sherman Armoured Troop Box are careful, confident and trained. However, the Desert Rat Shermans are careful and trained, but with a reluctant rating for motivation. These veterans of the desert were less likely to take risks when things got hairy, preferring to withdraw and fight another day. However, they do have the cautious not stupid rating for remount, meaning as veterans they were more likely to recover from a bailout. These variations mean you have some choices as a British player when you come to build your force. So this is a good kit, and there are several ways to buy it for late war flames of war. You can use it in a number of units, and build 75mm Shermans or Fireflies. I liked the Cromwell units and will probably end up using mine there. There are also some flavour options in using generic British units or the reluctant Desert Rats veterans. Are you going to use British Shermans or Fireflies in Flames of War? What are your plans? Let us know in the comments below.